Hey y'all, hey, it's your true Latasia Wright coming to you with another vlog post for Space and Grace. So yeah, you got me with a small flex in the background, right? My Christmas tree. <laughs> so we're talking about thankfulness today. And I know it seems a little late because it is. Um, I thought it was going to be a little cliche to do one on thankfulness around Thanksgiving. And then I just kept delaying and delaying it, but it never left my mind. So I take it as that I'm still supposed to do it. So this is going to be short and sweet and kind of to the point that will be Bible verses down at the bottom. But I'm just going to kind of speak from the heart and share my experiences and my thoughts on thankfulness. So rough year, right? 2020 has been hard for a lot of people. Some people have experienced tremendous blessings. Some people have experienced tremendous hardship. But a couple of days before Thanksgiving, I heard something pretty powerful. And it was like, your lack is somebody else's desire for abundance. So I may be chopping up the words a little bit, but what we see as lack in our life, somebody is wishing for that because it seems like abundance to them. And I think that's the whole basis and center of gratitude, right? And we get that, we get that. Sometimes what we take for granted, someone is wishing and praying for. So it kind of keeps things in perspective. So I think on a very basic level, we all understand gratitude. But even myself, I struggled a little bit because I was thinking like, I almost feel like the imposter syndrome to come on here and talk about being grateful. Of course, every day I think about the things that I'm grateful for and I'm blessed, but I still have those moments of like, God, why is this so hard? Why has this happened to me? Why can't I be one of those people that are seeming to be getting super blessed during this pandemic? Because that is not me. But I also have those very real moments where I've saw people lose their spouse, people lose their sibling, their parent, their cousins on Facebook. And I know that seems really dramatic, but at the same time, we can't take those things for granted. Those are things to be grateful for that you still have family members here, you still have breath in your body, and it humbles you, you know what I mean? And if we're following God and believers in Jesus Christ, we trust him, right? His plans is to prosper us and not harm us, correct? Um, lean out on our own understanding. Trust him with all our heart. Um, and seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added to us. And so I think the part we miss, and I myself realized this week, is there is a suffering. You know, we know this. We understand this to a certain extent. Maybe I don't all the way understand it all the time, but we know that it says in the Bible that your days will be full. Um, your days will be filled with trouble on this land. It's there's talks about a suffering of 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 being a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. I don't think enough people preach about it. I don't think enough people remind you. You know, it's all about the blessing, all things God can do for you, and He does. But count it all joy. Count it all joy because. If we sit back and we really think, we pray like we're supposed to and get in front of God's presence. I know we all get fatigued. I get fatigued. You get tired. You get exhausted. And then you get to this point where if you don't catch yourself, you start to give yourself that pity party. You start to get frustrated and those feelings start to overtake you. And then you start to look at all the things in the physical. But then you have to remind yourself that your battle is really spiritual. It is not about the physical things. The enemy comes in to kill, lie, and destroy so he will distract you from the prize. He will distract you from your path. He will distract you from the promises that God told you. And if we don't know how he attacks us, he attacks us so easily and pulls us so deep in that tunnel. So you have to really be aware, right? So what does this have to do with gratitude? Keep focusing on those things that you have to be grateful for. Because yeah, this is this this like if you're if you're in a similar situation like me or you have something bad going on, worse than I have going on. Are you're living great? You know, it's easy to be be it's easier to be in gratitude when you're on the top of the mountain, right? But I'm talking a lot to those people that may not be on the top of the mountain going through a storm. Yes, I think it's very important to validate your pain, experience your emotions, but we have to get back to gratitude and be very thankful about the things. One thing I really am sensitive to, um, I'm really sensitive about that. I guess before having kids, I just never would have thought that it was something that you would just be so grateful for but my kids talk they make noise they're so loud but there's someone out there that's just praying and wishing for their child to say the first word and they may be five or six and so I don't take that for granted do I get frustrated when they get loud and scream do I still yell at them yes but hopefully and my my goal is to dec decrease that a lot more handle it with um better uh communication tools 
Um, but I never, I never really forget that. You know what I mean? Sometimes my daughter talks my ear off and I'm like, Jesus, help me. <laughs> my brain is running and now she's putting this in. But somebody has a child somewhere her age that cannot talk to them or have a conversation. So it really humbles you and it makes you go to a place where I can be happy about this. I do want more. I'm not losing sight of what I want more of. But I have a lot to be grateful for. So God, help me get through this hard point. God, help me trust you. God, help me in my weakness. Because I know when I am weak, you are strong. So spirit, work in me. Allow me to uh, pass this test. Whether this test is from you or from the enemy, help me pass it. You know, Help me learn what I'm supposed to learn. Help me grow. That's mature gratitude. It's not just saying I thank you and then being in the slumps. You know what I mean? And I, like I said, I always give validation to you should feel your emotions, but we can't get stuck in negative feelings. We can't get stuck in what we don't have. Really focus on that gratitude and it's going to keep keep you moving to the next level, the next level in spiritual growth. And at every level and at every blessing, there's going to be some type of challenges. And I know some of you may be praying for those bigger challenges and those bigger blessings and you're willing to take those challenges with those biggest blessings but you kind of got to learn it at a level when i speak to you as i speak to myself you have to learn at the level you are now to be able to handle it at the next level and so i hope that helps someone i hope someone can relate to that i know it's short and sweet um after i review it i'll put some um, bible verses down at the bottom but always find that gratitude even when you don't feel grateful even when it feels like what do i have to be grateful for your eyes are open and I, I, I have to say, I'm sorry if you open your eyes today and the only thing you're grateful for is that you're not dead. So you may almost feel like it would be easier to be. Um, I, I've, I've had those thoughts and I experienced that and I'm sorry. But hang on. Reach out. Get help. You know, If you know me, if you don't know me, you can reach out to me. I will pray with you. I will pray for you. But keep going. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy win. You can do this and start to find gratitude for those of you that are just like, ah, oh, I've been in the phone for too long. It's time to find gratitude and watch it change your day, uh, your life, your mindset. So I hope that helped. You guys have a wonderful day or night. <laughs> Talk to you soon.